Greetings, and a warm welcome back to celebrities who died today. Today we embark on a poignant journey to pay homage to some truly remarkable souls whose presence graced our world. These luminaries, though departed from our midst, have left behind a legacy that continues to resonate profoundly. Join us as we delve into their lives, their contributions, and the enduring impact they've had on us all. Number 1. Notka Wolf Notka Wolf was a man of faith, music, and intellect. Born Werner Wolf on June 21, 1940, in Bad Gronenbach, Germany, he embarked on a journey that would lead him to become a revered Benedictine monk, priest, abbot, musician, and author. Werner, the son of a tailor, grew up in a modest household. Despite health challenges in his childhood, he pursued his education with determination, graduating from high school in 1961. His passion for knowledge and spirituality led him to the Benedictine Monastery of St. Ottilian Archabbey, where he would take the name Notka in honor of St. Notka. Notka's monastic life began with his profession as a monk on September 17, 1962. His intellectual curiosity took him to Rome, where he studied philosophy, and later to Munich for theology, philosophy, and natural sciences. Ordained a Roman Catholic priest on September 1, 1968, Notka's academic pursuits culminated in a doctorate in philosophy in 1974. Notka's leadership qualities shone when he was elected the fifth Archabbot of St. Ottilian Archabbey in 1977. He became a beacon of hope, spearheading the construction of hospitals, schools, and monasteries worldwide. His tenure as the ninth abbot primate of the Benedictine Confederation from 2000 to 2016 was marked by his commitment to service and education. Nocca's love for music was evident. He played the flute and the electric guitar and even performed with a band, showcasing his belief in the joy and healing power of music. On April 2, 2024, at the age of 83, Nocca Wolf passed away. His life, a testament to faith, learning and service, continues to inspire many around the globe. As we reflect on Nocca Wolf's legacy, let's remember his words life is and remains a risk he faced life with a smile, discipline, and unwavering trust in God. His journey teaches us the power of resilience and the impact one individual can have on the world. Number 2. Vera Chechua Vera Chechua was a luminary of the silver screen and a woman of profound talent and influence. Vera Chechua was born on July 22, 1940, in Berlin, Vera Wilhelm Mona Rust, known professionally as Vera Chechua, was a beacon of creativity in the world of cinema. Her journey began amidst the backdrop of a war-torn Germany, yet she rose to become an acclaimed actress, producer, director, and screenwriter. Vera's lineage was steeped in artistic brilliance. She was the granddaughter of Michael Chekhov, a legendary actor and the nephew of the great Russian playwright Anton Chekhov. Her mother, Ada Chechua, was also an accomplished actress, passing down the family's passion for the arts. In 1957, Vera's cinematic debut in Widower with five daughters marked the beginning of a career that would span over four decades. She graced the screen in more than 50 films, captivating audiences with her performances in The Doctor of Stalingrad, Angel in a Taxi, and The Young Sinner, to name a few. But Vera's impact extended beyond her roles in front of the camera. She was a trailblazer, advocating for women's rights and making her voice heard in the historic 1971 issue of Stern magazine, where she stood alongside 373 other women to challenge the status quo. Her personal life was as vibrant as her career. She was the companion of Elvis Presley during his time in Germany, supporting his advocacy for the oral poliomyelitis vaccine. Vera's relationships and marriages, including her union with Vadim Glona, were as storied as her filmography, reflecting a life lived with the same intensity she brought to her roles. As the years progressed, Vera transitioned into directing, crafting poignant film portraits of other notable figures, showcasing her versatility and vision. Her work behind the camera was as celebrated as her acting, earning her accolades and the admiration of her peers. On April 3, 2024, the curtain closed on Vera Chichawa's extraordinary life. She passed away in Berlin at the age of 83, leaving behind a legacy that will forever be etched in the annals of film history. Her contributions to cinema and culture remain unparalleled, 
a testament to her enduring spirit and talent. Vera Chichawa's story is one of resilience, artistry, and the relentless pursuit of expression. She navigated the complexities of a changing world with grace and determination, inspiring generations to come. As we reflect on her life, we are reminded of the power of storytelling and the indelible mark one person can leave on the world. Number 3. Cassette Rojan Anil. Air Chief Marshal Cassette Rojan Anil was a remarkable figure in Thai history. His life was a testament to service and leadership. Join us as we explore his journey. Cassette Rojan Anil was born on August 27, 1933. From a young age, he showed a keen interest in serving his country, which led him to a distinguished military career. In 1958, Cassette joined the Royal Thai Air Force. His dedication and skills saw him rise quickly through the ranks. By 1989, he became the Commander-in-Chief of the Royal Thai Air Force, and in 1992, he briefly held the most senior military post as the Supreme Commander of the Royal Thai Armed Forces. Cassette played a pivotal role in the 1991 military-led coup against the government of Chattichai Khun Haven. This event marked a significant turn in Thailand's political landscape, with Cassette at the forefront. After the coup, Cassette became the head of Thai Airways International. He was known for his controversial comments on the airline's hiring practices, which sparked much debate. Despite the controversies, Cassette's contributions to his country remained significant. He co-founded the Pro-Military Justice Unity Party and served as a senator, leaving a lasting impact on Thai politics and governance. On April 3, 2024, Cassette Rojanilil passed away at the age of 90. His death marked the end of an era, but his legacy continues to influence the nation. As we reflect on his life, we remember Cassette Rojanilil not just as a military leader, but as a complex figure in Thailand's history. His story reminds us of the multifaceted nature of leadership and the indelible mark it leaves on a country's soul. Number 4. Munekwita Mili Munekwita Mili was an extraordinary talent, whose voice touched many hearts. Let's delve into her life story. Born Flor Shiza Quispi Sukapura on December 18, 2000, in Yanahuaya, Peru, Munekwita Mili was not just a name but an emotion for her fans. From a young age, she showed a profound interest in music, which was evident when she won an artistic contest at just five years old. Her stage name, Munikwita Mili, became synonymous with vernacular Andean music. She rose to fame with hits like Ojitos Hekichuros and Busca de Otro Amor songs that resonated with the soul of Peru. Her brother, Oliver Quispi, composed some of her most memorable songs, including Quidate Con Ella and Maldito Destino, during the challenging times of the COVID-19 pandemic, Millie brought solace to many through her music. Her songs Know Me Busks and Pienso and T were particularly successful, garnering millions of views on YouTube. In 2023, she released Milanos a single that showcased her versatility as she ventured into Peruvian cumbia, further cementing her place in the music industry. Tragically, on April 3, 2024, the world lost this shining star. Munequita Mili passed away at the young age of 23 due to complications from cosmetic surgery. She left behind a legacy of music that will continue to inspire and a son, who will carry the memory of his mother's incredible spirit. Munequita Mili's last performance was in Moquegua in March 2024, a testament to her dedication to her craft. Her journey may have been cut short, but her music will live on forever. As we remember Munequita Mili, Let's celebrate her life by listening to her songs and keeping her memory alive. Number 5. Mike Colon Mike Colon was a football legend, whose life story is as inspiring as his career on the field. Mike Colon was born on January 31, 1948, in Opelika, Alabama. Mike's passion for football was evident from a young age. He honed his skills at WA. Berry High School in Hoover, Alabama setting the stage for an illustrious career. Mike attended Auburn University, where he became a standout linebacker. His exceptional play earned him all sec honors in 1968 and 1969, and he led the team in tackles in 16 of the 25 games he started. In 1970, the Miami Dolphins selected Mike in the 12th round of the NFL Draft. 
he quickly became a key player in the Dolphins' no-name defense contributing to their historic undefeated season and Super Bowl VII victory in 1972. One of Mike's most memorable moments came during the 1974 playoff game against the Oakland Raiders. In a play that would be known as the Sea of Hands, Mike nearly changed the course of NFL history with his defensive prowess. Off the field, Mike was a family man, living in Birmingham, Alabama, with his wife Nancy, their two children, Kelly and John, and five grandchildren. He also authored a book titled The Greatest Team, a Playbook for Champions. Sadly, Mike Colon passed away on April 3, 2024, at the age of 76. His legacy, both on and off the field, continues to inspire athletes and fans alike. As we remember Mike Colon, let's celebrate the life of a man who was not only a champion on the field, but also a role model in life. Number 6. Kalevi Kiviniemi Kalevi Kiviniemi was a legendary figure in the world of classical music, his fingers danced on organ keys, and his music soared through the halls of cathedrals and concert venues worldwide. Let's delve into the life of this maestro. Born on June 30, 1958, in Jalasjavi, Finland, Kalevi's passion for music was evident from a young age. He began playing the organ at 17 and pursued his studies at the Kuopio Conservatory and the prestigious Sibelius Academy. His talent was undeniable, earning him a concert diploma in 1983. Kalevi's international career took off in the early 90s, with recitals in Japan and London. He wasn't just a performer, he was an ambassador of the organ, bringing its majestic sounds to audiences across Europe, the USA, Russia, Asia, Australia, and the Philippines. His performances were not just concerts, they were experiences. Kalevi played in some of the most celebrated venues in the world, including the Notre Dame in Paris, where he first performed in 2000 alongside Olivier Latry. His solo debut at Notre Dame came two years later, captivating all who listened. Kalevi's discography is vast, with nearly 200 titles. He was the first to record the complete organ works of Jean Sibelius, showcasing his deep connection to his Finnish roots. But his talents weren't limited to pre-written scores. Kalevi was also a distinguished improviser, able to create music on the spot that was as intricate as it was beautiful. Beyond the stage, Kalevi contributed to the arts as the artistic director of the Lati Organ Week in Finland. He nurtured the next generation of musicians and was a respected jury member at international organ competitions. Sadly, the maestro's song came to an end on April 3, 2024. Kalevi Kiviniemi passed away at the age of 65, leaving behind a legacy that will resonate for generations. His music, his passion, and his dedication to the organ will never be forgotten. As we remember Kalevi, let's not mourn the silence left in his wake. Instead, let's celebrate the symphonies of life he composed, each note a testament to his extraordinary journey. Thank you, Kalevi Kiviniemi, for the music that will forever echo in our hearts. Number 7. Vitus Huanda. Bishop Vitus Huanda was a remarkable figure whose life journey has been an inspiration to many. Bishop Vitus Huanda was born on April 21, 1942, in the small Swiss town of Trun. Vitus Huanda's early life was marked by a deep faith and a commitment to the service of others. His path to the priesthood began with his studies at the Pontifical Athenaeum St. Anselm and the University of Fribourg where he earned a licentiate in theology. Ordained as a priest on September 25, 1971, Huanda's dedication to his faith never wavered. He continued his studies, earning a doctorate in theology, and in 1998 he became the Vicar General of Chur, a position that marked the beginning of his influential role in the church. In 2007, Pope Benedict XVI appointed him as the Bishop of Chur, a role he embraced with vigor and passion. His tenure as bishop was not without controversy, as he was known for his orthodox Catholic doctrine, which he reaffirmed in strong terms. Despite the challenges, he remained unwavering in his beliefs and his commitment to the Church. On May 20, 2019, Pope Francis accepted his resignation, and Bishop Huanda chose to retire to the Sancta Maria Institute, a place where he could live a quiet and prayerful life, celebrating the Tridentine Massachusetts and working for the revitalization of sacred tradition. Sadly, on April 3, 2024, Bishop Vitus Huanda, 
passed away at the age of 81, following a serious illness. His death was mourned by many who respected and admired his unwavering dedication to his faith and his service to the church. As we reflect on the life of Bishop Vitus Huanda, we are reminded of the impact one individual can have on the lives of others. His legacy is one of faith, service and devotion, and it will continue to inspire future generations. Number 8. Albert Heath Albert Tutti Heath was a legendary figure in the world of jazz, born on May 31, 1935, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tutti was the youngest of the Heath brothers, a true musical dynasty. Tutti's journey into music began in the vibrant post-war jazz scene of Philadelphia. His talent was undeniable, and by 1957, he had made his recording debut with none other than John Coltrane. This marked the beginning of an illustrious career that would span over seven decades. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, Tutti collaborated with a who's who of jazz greats, from Art Farmer to Sonny Rollins. His expressive drumming style brought a unique finesse to the genre, earning him a place on many classic albums, including Wes Montgomery's The Incredible Jazz Guitar and Nina Simone's Little Girl Blue. In 1975, alongside his brothers Percy and Jimmy and pianist Stanley Cowell, Tutti formed the Heath Brothers Band. Their music was a blend of intricate rhythms and harmonies, showcasing the family's deep musical connection. But Tutti's influence wasn't confined to the stage or studio. He was a beloved educator, sharing his knowledge and passion for jazz with students at the Stanford Jazz Workshop for over 30 years. His dedication to teaching was as profound as his drumming, inspiring countless young musicians. As we reflect on Tutti's life, we remember not just the music, but the man behind the drums. His warm personality and infectious smile were as much a part of his legacy as his rhythm. On April 3, 2024, the jazz world grew quieter as Albert Tutti Heath passed away at the age of 88. He left us in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but his beat goes on in the hearts of those who loved him and in the music that will play forever. As we draw the curtains on today's solemn yet uplifting tribute, let us carry forward the torch of inspiration lit by these extraordinary individuals. Their legacies serve as guiding beacons, reminding us of the power of resilience, compassion and creativity. We extend our heartfelt gratitude for your presence on this commemorative journey. Until we meet again, may their spirits continue to illuminate our path at celebrities who died today.